Now I'm going to walk you through setting up the N500C air seeder on the Gen 4 monitor. What we're looking at here is just the air seeder page. So to get there, I just hit menu, machine settings, and our seed star button. So this brings up everything that we're going to have to set on our our machine. So at the top left we have a status icon. Um, it tells us um, the diagnostics of the meter. So why why it won't work if we're having an issue. Uh, below that we have our target rate. So to change our target rate we simply press on that and we can set up to five different target rates as well as a prescription rate. <clears throat> At the bottom, you notice it has a check mark for show estimated seeds per acre. So for rate one, we've got 44.7 pounds per acre. And then if we hit the little calculator icon to the right, it will tell you what the seeds per acre are, which in this case is 134,994 seeds per acre. So a handy little feature for those of you that um, like to look at it in either pounds per acre or seeds per acre, um, we can see them both right here on this screen. Um, below that we have our, our prescription rate. Over in the middle at the top we've got our relative flow. So our blockage system across all the rows on the air seeder. Uh, the icon in the top right of that box is our turn compensation. So it tells us if it's active on a, a left hand turn or we're going straight or active on a right hand turn. Uh, below this we have our section control bar graph. So we can use the arrows and manually turn off sections or manually turn them back on. Below that we have our setup of the drill. So our rank selection, whether we're using a rear rank, front rank, or dual rank. So we'll just say rear rank in this instance. We've got our 32 millimeter white rolls selected. Our crop type is soybeans, which we set that under our work setup on the monitor. And then at the bottom, we have our MDV values or meter displacement values. We've got the left wing, left center, right center, and right wing. So as you notice, all of these are just a little bit different. So keep this in mind when you're doing a calibration because it'll give you the ability, as I'll show you here in a little bit, to calibrate all the meters as one, which would have the same meter displacement value, or as I showed you earlier, it's quick. Within a matter of minutes, you've got this drill calibrated and, and seeding. So I would recommend for the most accurate job, calibrating each one the first time. And then, you know, from then on, if you want to use active cal, which I'll cover later, use active cal. To the right of that, we have our alarms. So uh, tank alarm trigger, tank scale uh, at 25 pounds, it's gonna alarm us. Um, blockage warning sensitivities, uh, we can increase or decrease that from one clear up to 10 um, on how uh, our blockage alarms us. Alarm behavior, um, if we wanted to alarm on a block, beep on a block or do nothing, I would advise leaving it at alarm on a block. Um, you do have advanced settings where blockage delay, um, so 
if it sees a blockage, it's going to wait five seconds and then send the alarm, blockage alarm reminder. If you haven't stopped at 15 seconds, it'll alarm again. Uh, meter on delay, five seconds, or meter off dis delay. So if it sees the meter turn on or off, it's going to give you that five seconds and then alarm. So some of the advanced settings there. And then on over to the right, we have our utilities EPG. So that's our electronic power generator. Uh, this particular one is our PTO generator. When we go to turn that on, we want to engage our PTO switch on the armrest and then slide that EPG to on. Um, below that, and then when we shut it off, we want to slide it to off and then shut our PTO switch off on the armrest. Below this, we have our air pressure or our CCS blower. Um, we've got that in inches of H2O. So on soybeans, typically we're going to be running a uh, 30 inches of H2O. Uh, so we will uh, turn on our CCS blower and adjust that. Our tank status uh, is just showing our weight. We can uh, zero that out. I'll show you how to do that. And then we have an acres counter. So uh, at the bottom, you'll see we have diagnostics and calibrations. So at the top, we've got Diagnostics, we've got bin level, blockage, downforce, downforce power beyond, EPG, height sensor, and seating totals, lifetime, machine speeds, and meter motors. If we're having issues with a meter motor, we can go in there, see the status, the RPM, the voltage, uh, tank scales. We can go in there and see what our um, load uh, cells are, are doing. System voltages across the drill. So just uh, a lot of things to look at. Maybe if we're having, having some issues of the drill, maybe a technician might have you get in here and look at some of these things. So downforce control tells us what we're reading, what our set point is, and what we're actually reading. Blockage um, gives us our software and serial number of our, our master module and then our member modules. Next below diagnostics we've got our calibrations. <clears throat> so I'll start at the bottom and I'll do a tank scale calibration. Uh, this calibrates the tank scale that's measuring the weight of the product in our tank. So if it's not reading zero when the tank's clear and empty, come in here and do a calibration. Okay, we want the tank empty and the tank lid closed and then it'll tell you when it was last done. Just hit Begin calibration, wheel speed must be zero, hit next, select the reset to zero button. So now we have just calibrated our tank scale. We can close out of that. We can come into our height calibration and I recommend doing the height sensor calibration at the beginning of every season of every every product, not once a year. So the beginning of soybean drilling, I want you to calibrate that high sensor. Then, you know, in the fall, if you drill wheat, I want you to recalibrate it. So every time you hook onto your drill, I want you to go through these calibrations. So we'll just go through here it walks you through step by step on how to calibrate it <clears throat> tells you to completely raise it all the way up hit next then it'll tell you to 
fully lower it all the way down hit next I'm gonna go ahead and cancel because I don't want to change it I'm setting on concrete and didn't actually do it but that is how you calibrate your height sensor and then next we have our tank meter calibration so we have a manual cal and an active cal so first we'll go through the manual cal and to do the manual cal uh, we've got to have our tractor started with our MTG running so I'll go ahead and close out of this and I'll turn on our MTG for you As you see our status icon in the top left went to ready since I now have the power generator running. When I come down to the bottom, come back into meter calibration, select manual cal. So it's telling me I'm setting still and my EPG is turned on. Your blower's off, plenum must be down and calibration position slide gates open and your catch bags underneath the sections that you want to calibrate then you just hit next previously I showed you that we had two catch bags so for this example I can select left wing left center put my bags under those two and hit next Default is 50 RPM. That'll be fine for um, calibrating your meters. What you want to do is go back to the back now, hold your cal switch, your meter switch, and turn those meters at least two revolutions so that product's falling in your bags. Once you got some product, then take your bags, empty them and make sure their your scales are zeroed for an empty bag put them back on and then hit next so it'll go ahead count your revolutions and it'll give us our new mdv value i don't have any product in the tank so i just canceled out of it uh, once you do that, you enter it and then come back into manual, next, and then move your bags to your right center, right wing, and select them. Hit next. Now go back to your drill at the back and hold your meter switch until product's coming into your bag. Empty your bag. Put your bags back under and then hit next. It's going to go ahead and calibrate your meters as you're holding your switch back there until the meter stops. Once it stops, take the bag off, weigh it, come up to the cab, hit next, and put your weight in there. You'll have your new MDV value. So that's how you manually calibrate your meters. I recommend doing that at the beginning of every uh, season. Next, we've got our active cal. So we've got to have a minimum of 300 pounds in the tank. Um, if I had 300 pounds in the tank, we could do an active cal. I'll just walk you through what this does. You can, as you're seeding and you change, let's say you change varieties, you can go ahead and do an active cow and it's gonna keep track of what you're doing as you're seeding through the field. It's gonna come up with a new MDB value 
and it's going to ask you if you want to apply the new MTV value. If you do, you hit accept and it will put the new MDV value on there. Um, it's really a handy feature for changing varieties on the go. You don't have to stop and do the manual calibration. You can keep seeding and do it as you're going through the field. I'm going to go ahead and shut my EPG off. I'll go back into diagnostics and calibrations and next I'll go into procedures. Here we can do a meter verification and you can do this if you're unsure of your meter calibration. So if you hit begin procedure, uh, select your verification. So if you want to go through the field or if you want to do it stationary. Um, field method simulates actual seeding and this is the most accurate. So just select field, hit next, turn your EPG on, you want your blower off and your run machine to loosen product wheel speed stationary so then hit next and then just select the meter sections you want to verify so I'll select your left wing hit next and then you just zero out your scale with your collection bag and then hang your remove your meter cover plate install your catch bag and then make sure your slide gates are in uh, full open position, for example, if you're doing beans, and then hit next. You can tell it, let's say we want to do a half an acre, hit next, and then measure a course length and drive at seating speed towards the course. So, Go ahead and do that and hit start and then it will verify that your meter calibration was correct. So I'm going to go ahead and shut off my EPG once again. So that is setting up our um, seed star, our 500C air seeder. Next we can go up at the top and we have our up arrow with the dot above it. So information and settings. Here we have fast start. So we can check that and enable fast start. So it's going to turn these electric drives um, faster so we don't have a skip until we get to approximately two mile an hour and then the seeder itself will take over, the speed source will take over. Uh, speed source, our mode is in auto, so when it picks up GPS speed, it'll switch to uh, GPS. And then we've got our start and stop height at 80%. We can edit that. So we can use a common start-stop height or we can uncheck that and we can use an individual start-stop height, um, whichever the user recommends or prefers, I should say. Um, there's more down below that. We have our downforce settings. So it's going to increase by 10 pounds at a shot. and. Uh, downforce disabled warning there's a 10 second delay and failed to reach set point a 30 second delay coming on down we have our SCV assignments for our openers so SCV1 is our opener control and we can set this for automated or manual downforce 
So if you want manual downforce, obviously just slide that to on. If not, leave it off and hit your SCV settings. Here we're going to select automated SCV control. Hit next. We've got our um, active downforce plugged into Power Beyond. So I want to check mark use Power Beyond. And then I want timed. So I'm going to set my SCV1 for 20 seconds. That's our default. So what this means is, and then set SCV1 with a flow rate of 10, and then save this. So what this means is when you click SCV1 to lower your rock shaft into the ground, it's gonna give it oil flow for 20 seconds. And then Power Beyond is gonna take over and actively adjust your downforce to what you have it set at. So I'm going to close out of this and go to our main run page. And now this is what you would see going through the field. You can just touch your downforce, turn it on, and now we've got 185 pounds as our down target downforce. Below that, we've got our relative flow. If row three's acting up, we can dial in, look at it. Um, it'll give us this color graphs, green flowing, red blocked, yellow, unexpected. So everything that's going on with this monitor. Um, air pressure, our target rate, we can hit that, change that on the go. Over here to the right of our relative flow, we've got our um, turn compensation. Uh, above that, our tank status, our, eight, our weight, uh, how many acres till we're empty, uh, our blockage up above, we've got our EPG status, at acres, so, and then at the bottom, we have our section control. So, this is how you set up an N500C air seater. Thank you for watching, and if you have any questions, please contact your local Landmark dealership.